Good day everybody, welcome to today's video. Today's video is a special video due to some comments on Monday's video. And this is why you should never put anti-seize on your wheels. First off, let's crack open a beer. Motherfucking beer time. We got some Miller High Life Lady Special right here. Coming in 4.6%. Because <clears throat> you guys are going to need a beer. Because this is going to be one of those videos like the one I did on pumps and pressure. Where people have a hard time understanding that pumps don't create pressure resistance to flow creates pressure this is going to be one of those videos and we're going to talk about bolt tension and clamping force and why you shouldn't use anti-seize on your tires or should i say on your rims especially on drive shaft flanges let's have a sip then we'll get started All right, on my phone here, let's start off with a couple of <clears throat> comments that were posted on the recent video. And I'm not here to call these people out. I'm just here to offer a public service announcement. <clears throat> so, Chris Roy says, that's the reason why I put grease between the rims and the disc plates around the bolt holes and I grease every bolt threads. Because you guys obviously watched that video where the tire was seized on my Volkswagen. And the second comment is, bro, you have to put some anti-seize on those threads and on the wheel hubs, especially with aluminum wheels. I had to do the same thing, beat my wheels off once and only once. Then I applied anti-seize on the hubs and wheels. No more pounding wheels off, frickin' salt here in PA. And believe me, that sounds like a great idea. Absolutely. Who wants to fight with that? But I'm gonna explain to you right now what the issue is so we're gonna look at three things here that are all related you guys probably all heard the horror stories where someone's bought wheel spacers and they put them on even though they use impact gun on them and you know the tire goes flying off so there's a few things we gotta look at bolt tension which is your torque just because he torqued your wheels onto the correct specs does not mean you have the clamping force required. Clamping force. Clamping force and coefficient of friction involves holding the wheel on the hub. I'm gonna have you guys stare at my tire here, so let's sink in while we're talking about it. So, what's the purpose of torquing down your lug nuts? Bolting it down to the torque creates the clamping force required so that the rim doesn't slip on the hub. How is that possible, you may say, because there's not much movement for the studs in the wheel. That may be true, but the studs aren't designed to handle the torque of the wheel spinning. The bolts, the setup is designed to hold the tire on the hub. The clamping force, which is created by torquing down the nuts, creates the coefficient of friction required so that the wheel doesn't slip on the hub. And this is especially important for drive shaft flanges. I know it's a great idea. If you ever had to remove a drive shaft flange and it sees to hell and you're gonna put anti-seize on it, so next time that doesn't happen. What may happen down the road is, is that the bolts will eventually become work hardened or break off due to the torque being applied to it without the coefficient of friction because you got the anti-seize on it. Same goes with your wheel here. Putting anti-seize between your wheel and the hub eliminates that coefficient of friction needed to prevent your lugs from shearing off and your tire coming off. So I'm going to read this off <clears throat> that I found going down the deep web that may help some people. Generally, the more clamping force to hold the wheel onto the hub, more force it requires for the wheel to slip on the hub. That being said, there cannot be any bending load on the stud. If there isn't sufficient clamping force or there's too much clamping force between the wheel and the hub, 
there will be flexing and the tension load on the wheel studs then drop to zero. With no tension load on the stud, the clamp joint is no longer tight. This results in a bending load on the wheel studs and thus the wheel let go. This is how wheels fall off on cars. The clamp force is related to bolt torque. The problem is the clamp force is only loosely related to the bolt torque. So that being said, just because you torqued it down to the proper spec doesn't mean you have achieved the proper clamping force. There's many variables that affect that. For example, if there's dirt or a bunch of rust between your wheel and your hub, you may not get the coefficient of friction needed because as it works its way out, or just maybe create like a lubricant almost, even though that kind of sounds silly, but it's not gonna have the friction needed to stay on. Also, if, you're, if your studs are dirty and you're torquing them up, you know, that extra friction on the studs when you're trying to torque the bolts, even though your torque wrench says, let's say 100 pounds, you got 100 pounds, you may not actually have that on the stud itself. So I want to know in the comments below what you guys think. After seeing this video and kind of explaining it to you, it's not the stud torque that keeps your wheel on the hub. It's the clamping force coefficient of friction that allows that. I'm not saying, you know, just because you anti-seized your hubs that, you know, your tire is eventually going to fly off. I've done it before in the past and I've never had issues, but that doesn't make it right. There is that chance that things may go south and it could get ugly. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, post them below. Otherwise, I want to thank you guys for watching.